are watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto, Ontario. I'm Catherine Bullock. Assalamu alaikum and greetings of peace. The UNHCR Zakat Fund is helping refugees access ed education. We will talk to the senior officer Muhammad Abu Asaka. But first, some news headlines. Indigenous grandmothers trek to honor missing and murdered Indigenous women. Islamic Society of New Brunswick to build a new mosque. Muslim Women's Summer Basketball League to host match. Muslims battle plague of Islamophobia in US 21 years post 9-11. Now the details. Krista Fox, an Indigenous grandmother who trekked across Canada to honour missing and murdered Indigenous women, has concluded her journey this weekend in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Fox started her journey, called Christa's Kilometres for MMIWG, in Victoria, British Columbia last year. She started the journey after being inspired by the loss of a family member. Fox was welcomed by a small group of around 20 at her stopping point. The husband of Erin Brooks, an Indigenous female who went missing from St Mary's First Nation in Fredericton 10 months ago, says to local media, the women doing the effort to raise awareness are great. The Islamic Society of New Brunswick has made a down payment of $250,000 for a church near Fredericton. It will be repurposed as a mosque and community centre. Sayed Sohawadi, founder and chairperson of the society, says to local media that the growing population of Muslims in New Brunswick need new places of worship. Sohawadi says that although there are some mosques already, they are not enough. The Islamic Society of New Brunswick was founded in 2019. The society opened its first mosque in St. John in 2020. The second is in Moncton. Muslim Women's Summer Basketball League, or MBSBL, is hosting a match on September 25th at Toronto Pan Am Sports Centre. The match will see the best women basketball players come together. The event is open to both male and female spectators. MWSBL is a Toronto-based non-profit league that gives Muslim women a venue to pursue their passion in the sport. The league runs through summer. The league was initially set to launch in the summer of 2020. However, due to COVID-19 restrictions, the launch was postponed until this summer. Commemorations for the September 11th, 2001 terror attacks remain an important part of US history. But 21 years on, Muslims are still a target of hate, bullying and discrimination as a result of the stereotypes that were perpetuated by the media post 9-11. Hussam Alouche, Executive Director of the Los Angeles Chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations says that as a result, Muslims continue to face the threat of targeted violence. A 2022 study by Rice University's Boniyuk Institute for Religious Tolerance in Houston has found that for Muslims, the scores on the Islamophobia index increased from 18 in 2018 to 26 in 2022. And that's it for the news. Last week in Canada, children went back to school after the summer holidays. Around the world, refugee children are not so lucky. The UNHCR states that 48% of refugee children are out of school. To talk to us about how the UNHCR's Refugee Zakat Fund is assisting in this, we're talking to the Senior Officer Muhammad Abu Asaka. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. It's very nice to be back uh, with you, uh, Dr. Kathy, again. It's nice to have you join us as well about this very important program that we're going to talk about. Let's just start with some basics. What are the barriers that a child refugee faces to getting into school? There are several barriers uh, that refugee children uh, are facing related to being exiled out of home country, number one, and being uh, facing a new culture, a new country. And uh, we're looking also into so many of protracted situations. They have mm -hmm. been there for a long time. And so many of the savings for the family has been run out, and therefore they've been pushing their kids to work instead of sending them to school. Mm -hmm. And 
transportation is another challenge because of the, the, the financial abilities for families to send their kids to school and looking into new curriculars and also um, some challenges related to certifications mm -hmm. because so many of them lost their certifications in the process of being exiled out of their own countries. You have issued a report that talks about the difference between primary school enrollment, secondary school enrollment, and tertiary enrollment. And it's the, the drop is dramatic from 77% at primary to 31% at secondary, down to 3% at tertiary. Are you able to tell us a little bit more about how, why is it dropping so dramatically as the children get older? This is very, very, very sad situation. And looking into the refugee situation, the context that only 3% of refugee adults go to higher education. And when we think about uh, last week when every student's going back to their schools, and I'm thinking about refugees. Mm -hmm. And for refugee children where half of them are out of schooling are also for the adults, because there are some challenges that are facing, number one, in related to the costs. Mm -hmm. uh, in so many of the cases, it's expensive for refugees to get admitted to schools and also uh, for some legal legal aspects to get admitted as well. So basically, uh, we are looking into having refugees going back to school so we can invest in the education because we believe investing in refugees' education is the smartest investment on the long term. I want to ask you about that, but just let's make this uh, more visual for the viewer who's never been to a refugee camp or perhaps actually some of your viewers are refugees. But when I see the images of refugee communities, they often in tent cities and then you wonder, so how are they going to get from the tent city to the school? And universities, for example, place very high fees on international students. So how is a refugee treated, like in, from the administration point of view? Are they treated as a local or are they treated as an international student? So if you could just talk about like the practicalities of, of living in a tent city and trying to get to school. This is a very good question. And let me portray a picture for some of the audience who have never been to refugees. Uh, sitting. Mm -hmm. So when today we are talking about 100 million refugees and internally displaced people in the world. And when we look into half of the children are out of schooling, just let us think about what kind of future are waiting for this kind of generation. So uh, in terms of refugee camps, there are only 15% of refugees live in camps. The vast majority of them live in urban setting. And this is what we would like them to be like the kind of context that they're living into uh, for for a long uh, for for so many different reasons that we would like them to have a kind of a similar life conditions uh, to where they have used to. So mm -hmm. when we look into any specific country where the family are running out of their savings and they are the employment is restricted in so many situations because look into the global economy, looking into the unemployment rates for local people mm -hmm. so that adds more burden and barriers on refugees themselves so if i am at 18 or 20 years old i would be thinking million times before joining a school rather than working on finding any opportunity to find mm -hmm. any kind of income for my family looking into family con family context and they're having the the, the minimum to keep them mm -hmm. alive and so they've been forced to go to work to find an income for their families. And this is why we say, when we ask for an income for education, for higher education program or for the primary education program, so this is to save their efforts and instead of going to labor, mm -hmm. so they can have an opportunity for hope. Tell us then about the Zakat Fund, the Refugee Zakat Fund. How does that, uh, is this an, a Zakat eligible expense? Yes, uh, as part of the Refugee Zakat Fund, uh, Alhamdulillah, we have managed to receive a fatwa from Canada uh, that allows UNHCR to receive uh, uh, fa Zakat funding for the purpose of education and mainly for higher education. So this will allow uh, talented refugees to get admitted to schools wherever they are. They can join uh, local schools. And we have seen so many examples where we have seen refugees being studying medicine, studying engineering, mental health, uh, 
uh, law and different topics and looking into a few years from ahead from now so we are going to see professionals in so many different fields so refugees are because of their resilience they are not a burden on any of the local country rather they are a contribution they're a contribution to the local economy they're a contribution to that investment of education and knowledge and this is what we are talking about so this and are, you, are you are you stressing this contribution rather than burden because of political anti-refugee sentiments in many uh, receiving countries? Well, it depends on the context of refugees. There are so many situations where we have seen refugees die because of famine, die because of no no any kind of assistance. So, mm -hmm. based on a priority, we can like look into what is most needed. But mm -hmm. looking into protracted situations, we believe that it is very important to look into. Uh, the future of refugees, the future for themselves, for their families, their communities, their local communities, and they can have an, an asset to go with back home. And how are you dispersing the money? How are you choosing the people to support? So we are asking all philanthropists to look into investing a kind of uh, investing for a long term. Uh, in education, investing in refugees for for sustainability purposes. And we how are you get the money? Are, is there an application form on your website? Like, how are you making that one to one connection? So, Refugees a Cat Fund has a website online. Everybody can visit, and they can donate online. They can choose education, and we have we're very blessed, alhamdulillah, to have for the first time a fatwa that endorses uh, the zakat that endorses UNHCR to receive the zakat and to channel to refugees. And we are looking into um, uh, a long-term plan where we have would like to have as many of talented refugees as possible. And how will you find these people? How are you going to find the refugees to give the money to? So as you know, uh, UNHCR has a database for all refugees. We have a one-on-one -on -one interviews and meetings and we have their data and we know who are there what the qualities are qualifications and what kind of certification and uh, we also know their aspiration we know their hopes and this is what they tell us every day mm -hmm. we know that this kind of resilience they would like to to further pursue and to to have similar work, living environment like their the people in the living countries mm -hmm. would like them to join them going to school would like them to have to share the same expertise the same knowledge and the same uh, the same investment so we can see this uh, resilience unleashed uh, and so we can have so many uh, of them in uh, building their local communities and also uh, uh, their home countries in the future. We have yeah. seen so many examples of yeah. refugees being uh, pioneered in so many different countries when they get the opportunities. So, so what means, we're I'm, almost out of time. Sorry to interrupt, but I just want to ask you so, what, is the zakat going to cover tuition or books or housing? How's it going to be spent? And will you spend it directly to the institution or give it to the person? It covers all. It covers the tuition, it covers the uniform, it covers the stationaries and transportation. So we're talking about the full scholarship that enables students to go to school. This costs twelve thousand dollars for a full year, a full program, like for a mm -hmm. whole uh, bachelor degree, mm -hmm. and it costs three thousand four hundred dollars for one academic year. So well, this is that we we're out of time, but you you ended on the numbers, so we'll do a plea for people to donate. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, please share, like, and subscribe. Stay safe and God bless.